Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Recruiting Podcast. I'm Billy Embody. With me is Shay Dixon. Trying to get you through the rest of this week with a great conversation around LSU's official visitors for the fall. Shay, a lot of buzz around the 2025 class with DeCorian Moore being the latest commitment, but we are flipping back over to that 2024 class to take a look at where the Tigers stand with some of their fall official visitors who are just getting ready to uh, ramp up their senior seasons this week. And we'll jump right in. You can take a look at this 2024 class. It's at number six in the country overall, a heavy Louisiana influence. They got some really quality out-of-state guys as well as of late. They're still swinging for the fences on a lot of prospects, including multiple five-star prospects, both in-state and out-of-state. But for the most part, we're going to talk about the out-of-state guys that are coming in for official visits this fall. These are guys that have locked in their official visit dates. And we're not going to lead off with Colin Simmons. We'll talk about him later, the potential for him to come in for the Florida game, which he's talked about. But we are going to lead off with a guy that LSU has quietly been gaining a little bit of ground with, and that's five-star athlete Terry Bussey, the number two overall athlete in the country on the on three industry ranking. He's out of Timpson High in East Texas. And LSU is trying to really insert itself here as a big figure in his recruitment as Texas A&M holds the heavy on three recruiting prediction machine lead. I think for me, this is the guy that <clears throat> if you're just talking numbers, Billy, that Wardo Mack, I know he's ranked as a corner. LSU is recruiting him at safety. They've got Deshaun McBride committed. He's the top five safety in the country. He's from Louisiana, Denham Springs. They've got West Feliciana's Joel Rogers committed. He's a top 25 safety, I think. On the, I think he's 12 or 13 on the industry rankings right now, maybe. So you could end up with two top 10 safeties, both from within a stone's throw of Baton Rouge, really. And I go back to Mac. That would have been the third safety. He commits to Florida now. Does anything materialize with LSU down the road? I don't know. For now, though, Bussy would be that guy that you would say, if there's a third safety, who could they get? I know he's ranked as an athlete. If you're watching on YouTube, we always say this on, I listen to a lot of my stuff anyways on Spotify, but folks do take it in on YouTube. Billy does a great job of throwing up all these profiles. So if you're looking at it, you're reading it. He's got some of the wildest stats I've ever seen, Billy, for a Kid who's playing, I don't know how high level, how high level of ball is Timpson in Texas. It's it's fairly good. Uh, you know, they that Timpson actually has been able to put together a really nice run with Terry Bussey. They've got Vosky Howard, who's another high level uh receiver prospect. I actually think LSU should have been kicking the tires on him a little bit earlier this cycle, but I mean, they're 2A. Uh, this but, isn't, you know, the highest level uh, by any means, but he's been about as stats, as though, think yeah. He's ranked as the number one athlete in the country. Um, yeah. Or top two. Over 2,000 yards passing, more than 25 passing touchdowns, better than 60% completion percentage. Then he rushes for 2,646 more touchdowns. That's 14 yards a carry. Then he played defense, 115 tackles, five picks. Four of the picks of those five went for touchdowns, and he did special team stuff. When you talk about an athlete, that's about as good as it gets. But it does seem that most schools are after him as a DB. I agree with that. And another thing, too, is the track profile with him. I mean, he he ran a sub-1100 meter uh, this spring on a torn meniscus. He ended up getting it cleaned up. His recruitment kind of – it hasn't been weird. He's just – uh, he ran into this meniscus surgery and it derailed um, when he was supposed to take an LSU official visit at first. He was supposed to go to TCU as well for an official. He put all that off when he got the surgery. He didn't want to be hobbling around campuses. Um, and so LSU got him on uh, campus in June, which I, I felt like was big. They were able to make that impression late in the month of June. A couple other programs got him on campus as well. Texas and Oklahoma got him on campus for official visits. But as the summer winds down, this has really been around LSU and AM with Alabama, you know, lurking with an official visit as well next month. But Terry Bussey is set to come in with his family for the Arkansas game next month, just a few days before he makes his commitment. So LSU is going to take a big swing here. 
Yeah, and this is one that Texas A&M has seemingly led for for a while. There was a feeling at the end of the summer, Billy, that he was like about to shut things down and it was going to be for A&M is what everyone from every college kind of sources we've talked with felt. And when he didn't, that opened the door for other teams to say, okay, we can now try to get an official visit. And with him setting a decision date for the end of September, now that he's lined these official visits up, it's very clear that LSU was one of those teams that had him say, let me take one more look around before I, you know, make a firm decision on something. So I just simply him doing this tells me that the door is not completely shut for this to be an A&M win. I do think that they are the team everyone will have to beat, though. Uh, I agree. Um, I will say uh, he was wearing an Alabama shirt when I visited him all the way back in May. Uh, if you're into shirt science or whatever, who knows? He could have showed up to school the next day in Texas gear, the day after that, LSU gear, the day after that, Texas A&M gear. But um, always interesting to see sometimes when you catch the kids not on a practice field or what have you. Um, and for those wondering on shirt science or gear science, you know, Colin Simmons, both times I saw him in the spring, he was wearing Texas A&M stuff and the Aggies faded on that one. So we'll see how it goes with Terry Bussey. And another one that is shaping up to be another prospect who LSU is trying to take from the state of Texas is five-star cornerback Kobe Black. And this is one where you're starting to see a little bit of buzz more so than Bussey that we might not see an official visit happen here for LSU, but as of now, he does want have one set um, for, uh, I believe, the um, the Grambling game, and LSU is going to bring him in and uh, try to you know chip away. He was a guy that was supposed to be on campus for the Bayou Splash. He ended up going to A and M, but Texas has been the on three RPM leader here for a long, long time, um, and they have one of his teammates on the roster as well. So. Uh, Kobe Black does have a brother. He played for Oklahoma State. LSU brought in Drake Bernard Converse last year, uh, who played with his brother Corey at Oklahoma State. And there was kind of some buzz that Drake Bernard Converse was kind of recruiting his brother Corey to recruit Kobe. This one, I'm surprised it's kind of gone on as long as it has, but it seems like he's going to take things to the fall, take official visits, and, and then figure out when he wants to make a decision. Yeah, it's, I'm surprised, like you said, that he didn't set a date at some point and say, this is when I'm doing it. Now he's, again, he's sticking, it appears, with that LSU official visit to kick off the college football season, at least LSU's home stretch with uh, coming in for that first game against Grambling. Then I believe the only other two he's got on tap, Billy, are Bama and A&M. So those schools, obviously Texas being the leader, I think Oregon has been in the mix. I think it, when he did say something about a top five or a lead group, it was Oregon in there. I would put, I don't know where I put my chances at this. I would say I'm not even sure they're in the top two, but I don't know if that could change. I just think that Texas and A&M both have, as you noted, Texas always been considered the leader. A&M was the one who got him in on that final weekend of July. But I do think when you talk out-of-state teams that LSU is probably the one both distance-wise and simply the work they've done recruiting him to be in the mix to potentially you know, pull off a shocker. I will also say that, yes, he is one of the best corners in the country. I also think anything at corner from here is Lanyap because I really like Kai Bates. I really like Andre Evans. I like Jawan Johnson a ton. Then you've got Wallace Foster on as a nickel. So – even if they don't even get another corner, I don't think that's an issue. Uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, I think this is a great example of when you have your class buttoned up in a sense, you can kind of swing for the fences. Um, we, we've seen that, and we're kind of seeing that with Bussy in a way. You know, you've got Joel Rogers, you've got Deshaun McBride. I've always said they would love to take three. You know, it, it they had Maurice Williams uh, committed. He ended up going elsewhere. I think three was the perfect number that they wanted in this class at safety, but they do have two of the best in the country committed. If you can get Terry Bussey, and I think Terry's one of those guys that if you really wanted to look at it, you could have Joel Rogers playing free, Sean McBride playing strong safety, and Terry Bussey at, at nickel. So, I mean, I know that's loading up on nickels, but, man, I, I just think you you swing for the fences. When you get classes, your particular position groups in – certain positions of filling needs, talent acquired, all that, then you can start swinging for the fences even more. Um, and we'll kind of 
explain that more as we get into the back half of this podcast at um, the offensive line spot. But um, LSU is going to swing away on Kobe Black. I'm in agreement with you. I think he's one of those guys that would just be a really nice to have at this point. And, um, you know, you can never have enough talent. And who knows? Maybe they do need a third corner. Who knows what Denver Harris's future ultimately looks like? And um, who knows? All those things. It's just good to stack as much talent as you can. And that's what they're trying to do with Kobe Black. Shay, before we move on to uh, the four star prospects, multiple uh, high end guys still left to officially visit LSU this fall. We've got to tell you guys about our friends at myperfectfranchise.net. You could call up Andy over there and he can give you the rundown if you're looking to diversify, find your way out of corporate America, want a side hustle. He's been hooking people up with, you know, op entrepreneur opportunities for over 10 years when he started this um, 10 plus years ago. Uh, his services are free. You can always reach out to him, give him a call, text or email our friend Andy Ludike. Uh, at myperfectfranchise.net. He's a big college sports fan. He's been uh, a big follower of our board for a long time, Shay. Even just before you got to On3, we've been working with uh, Andy and myperfectfranchise.net. They're a consulting company that helps others find franchises that fit their needs, skill sets, investment requirements, and time commitment uh, constraints. So check them out. Check them out, myperfectfranchise.net net. Shay, we're back on the train of going down this list of highly touted prospects that are set to visit LSU. And one that popped up on three's Chad Simmons had the scoop on an IMG offensive tackle, Jordan Seaton, originally from the DMV, a top 50 overall prospect in the country, has set an LSU official visit for this fall. Uh, the Tigers are looking to overtake guy, uh, programs like Ohio State, Florida, Alabama, and others. Uh, this is one of those prospects that I feel like LSU is, again, kind of swinging for the fences with. Top 50 offensive tackle. They've got Ori Williams. They've got Ethan Callaway at the position. Uh, but Jordan Seaton is one of those guys who's um, somebody that's worth you know pushing for and, and trying to get on campus and seeing, again, kind of where the chips fall. Yeah, this is a, a lot like corner for me right now where I say Brad Davis has done such a good job of getting four offensive linemen already committed. He's got a couple of tackles. He's got a couple of interior offensive linemen. And we're about to see a trend here looking at a couple of offensive linemen, Seton being the higher ranked of the two, but to where you feel like, hey, let's just keep going after him. And if for some reason or some way we can convince him to get on board, he becomes the highest ranked guy you've got in the class. And I think with Seton, there had been recruiting wise, there had been a lot of buzz around Florida as the team coming out of the summer as the team to watch. But then I also know kind of from talking to people at different schools that Bama is a team that's on this visit list uh, that a lot of people have an eye on. So we'll be interesting um, kind of to watch uh, unfold here. But at least, again, getting him to campus, I think is big. I do think, though, if we're talking about these offensive linemen, Billy, and you would probably agree between Jordan Seaton and Elijah Thurman, I think that Thurman's the one that LSU fans should probably keep a closer eye on just because of the interest he's shown in, in LSU so far after picking up an offer at camp this summer working out with Brad Davis. Yeah, and look, uh, to close out on Jordan Seaton, LSU's going to host him for that uh, game against Grambling. Then he heads to Florida the next weekend. Then Oklahoma, September 30th. He then checks out. Uh, Ohio State the first weekend in October before going to Oregon, November 10th, South Carolina, November 18th, and uh, then kind of heading down the path to a decision uh, late this season. It seems like there's no commitment date or timeline for him, but he does want to take those official visits and he can stack them up. He's a top 50 prospect. He can do that with the new rule. So Jordan Seaton, at least a name to know. Uh, we'll see if LSU can uh, you know kind of shake things up there and, and get him. Let's go to a guy who would be going up against uh, Jordan Seaton, whether it be in games or on the other side of the ball in practice, because he is the next up highest ranked prospect. That's Danny Okoye, uh, who sits there in the top 200, but that's on the on three industry ranking. 
He's a top 100 overall prospect in the country for on three. He's going to be coming in for the Arkansas game with his family. Uh, and this is a guy that when you look at him, I mean, we talked a lot about Colin Simmons and how good of a prospect he is. And Danny Okoye is kind of in that raw, little bit, you know, unfinished product kind of position. But he is probably physically a little bit more imposing than Colin Simmons. And you see why a lot of schools are really working to uh, get him on campus and, and take their swing at him. Yeah, and Okoye, Chad Simmons, you see um... – Oklahoma has been the team out front on the on three recruiting prediction machine, Texas in the number two spot uh, on th threes. Chad Simmons, one of our national directors of recruiting uh, put out a piece, his recruiting buzz uh, within the past week. And he had touched on a ton of kids. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, check it out on the site. But he did say with Okoye that Tennessee is a team that had kind of garnered a little bit of buzz coming out of the summer. So, I don't know if that means that he's a kid who really has a number of options that he could lean towards and isn't really set in on someone, or perhaps a team like Tennessee has been able to get in, make those inroads, and get themselves a, ahead of in-state Oklahoma or whomever else is trying to get in the mix. I've always liked Okoye. I just think that if LSU's got any shot here, it's they blow him away on this official visit. And maybe more, mo equally as importantly, they make a big impact on his family. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think John Jancic deserves a little bit of credit. I, and I, the, he kind of got dealt a tough, t tough hand, right? You know, he gets promoted, uh, you know, kind of like Jimmy Lindsay, kind of that that move with Jamar Cain and all that kind of created that that role for John Jancic. And so all of a sudden, he's jumping in and you know having to kind of play catch up on some guys. But yeah, you know, I think LSU really impressed him. He's a guy that isn't necessarily, you know overly i still think he's kind of new to the process in a in a sense you know he's a he's he, his family is is just kind of new to it and so explaining to them kind of like how good he is and what their plan is you know it kind of reminds me of bj ojolari just in that sense although they had gone through it with aziz danny and his family didn't have that danny okoye does have that kind of family structure and background where maybe lsu can play into that a little bit um, and make him feel comfortable. Uh, he's a guy that I think you'd be very comfortable taking in this class, um, you know, as an edge rusher, and they need to address that. So he's going to come in for the Arkansas game. They'll uh, swing for the fences there with Danny Okoye and see how the chips fall. But this one's kind of seen a little bit of buzz around multiple programs. But yeah, like you mentioned, Shay, uh, Tennessee kind of lurking in that one as well. So um, that would be a big piece to add from the edge rusher standpoint. We wrap up with the the last official visit that we at least know of for sure right now. And that is a guy that just flat out raved about his LSU visit this summer for the Bayou Splash. And one that kind of snuck in there for that visit. And that's Elijah Thurman, who's out of the state of Georgia. LSU uh, has been doing a really nice job prioritizing that state. Um, it's funny, I'm flying out tomorrow morning to uh, hit Atlanta for the Corky Cal Classic, see some LSU commits see some of their top targets. And I looked up just trying to see where Elijah Thurman was and see if it was worth the squeeze. Well, I might as well have flown into Jacksonville. So uh, he's right that, down there on the border um, in, in kind of southeast Georgia uh, near the state of Florida. So this one, you see Florida UCF near the top of that on three RPM machine. Uh, but he's taking this recruitment into the fall. He's really just kind of gone along with the process and uh, came through campus, picked up the offer, and really was blown away. Yeah, of all the guys we've talked about on the podcast, I think Elijah Thurman is the one that they might have the best shot at because there are some people who think that they might be the team to beat right now coming out of the summer. The job Brad Davis and LSU staff, there's a lot of people, whether coaches or behind the scenes or Brian Kelly, it doesn't matter. Everyone deserves some credit for recruitments and how they unfold, but Thurman just seemed like LSU did a very good job of getting him to campus in June, having him at camp, evaluating him, really kicking kind of off the recruitment of him in a big way by saying, we're offering you. And then that led to quickly, hey, I'm lining up official visits and LSU's at the top of my list to figure out when I can come there. He spoke very highly of the staff to you, Billy, whenever you caught up with him 
uh, following the offer and, and camping at LSU and everything like that. I believe he was at the Bayou Splash, right? That So, yes, that was end of July. So you've got two visits out of him in the past two months. And now he's the team he's kind of, you're one of the teams he's talking about the most and saying he's got a good bond with and looking forward the most to getting back to with his family on an official visit. I know they've got four offensive linemen. I would keep a close eye on Elijah Thurman. With the way Brad Davis has recruited so far, he's dipped into Georgia for multiple signees now before. I uh, I just get the feeling that this is one that we're going to be talking about more in the coming months. Yeah, I completely agree. And uh, I mean, he's look, we're the highest on him out of anyone in the industry. He was right there at the Under Armour Orlando camp as well that I was at. Um, and he's one of those prospects that needs a college weight room. You, he kind of reminds me a little bit, another Peach State prospect LSU was able to land, Paul Mabenga, uh, just from he's a little, he's a little thinner. He's not as thin as Paul Mabenga by any means, but somebody that definitely needs to add weight in the college weight program. Um, and I think LSU has, has really made a nice impact on him. And uh, he would be a really nice addition to pick up here to kind of round out this class. We know Blake Ivey, the four-star offensive lineman from Texas, has set an, a commitment date for Saturday. Seems like a and is going to hold on there. But, you know, Shay, that's another one that LSU is still kind of hanging around for. Yes, and – I think Ivy, when he gave LSU an official visit over the summer and AM, when he then gave both schools visits at the end of July during that one open week that prospects could go see campuses, it became clear that AM had always been considered the team to beat. So for LSU to hang around that long was a big deal. Now we're ultimately three weeks into August, still before his senior year. He's ready to shut it down. We'll see if that was enough. Um, but there were people, even as of earlier in the week, on the A&M side, who said, man, this has been 50-50. It's a lot. A&M people are even saying this was a lot closer than anyone expected. So maybe he pulls off the shocker. LSU gets him. We'll see. But it is good to see that they're continuing to have backup plans, the backup plans, the backup plans, which when you put yourself in that kind of position and are able to get four commitments already in and still position yourself with these guys who are all top 300 type players, that's pretty big time. I love what they're doing with O-line recruiting. Yeah, so we'll be tracking Blake Ivy, another pair that uh, we're going to be tracking uh, into the fall is uh, LSU target Colin Simmons. The five-star plus prospect did commit to the Longhorns in August. Um, they beat out LSU, but this is one where it's going to be an uphill battle, Shay, but there's a chance he comes in for that Florida, Florida game. He's talked about that being his official visit. We'll see if he makes it back on campus and LSU can – kind of start turning away again, Adam. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if he doesn't pop back onto campus. I'm not ruling it out, and I'm not saying to get excited about LSU fans, that even a chance of Colin Simmons, given it was only a week ago or two weeks ago when he committed to Texas. But you saw why they had that buzz coming out of the Bayou Splash and felt good about Colin Simmons because simultaneously on that visit weekend, they left feeling good about Caden Durham. Duncanville's running back, and they left feel, feeling good about DeCorian Moore, their star receiver. And all three guys set up commitment dates for within 48 hours of each other. Durham and uh, Moore obviously end up with LSU. Simmons says, hey, this came down to the very end for me. He said, I made my final decision the day before, and it was just too tough to pass up with Texas. Essentially, I had to offer, meaning the other, the choice might have been LSU. So I'm not ruling LSU out here of getting a visit. and. Does that even mean an official at some point? I don't know. I don't think Texas would love for that to happen at all and would do all they could for that not to happen. But I'm not going to be surprised if one game weekend this season, you know, LSU recruiting fans or football fans, whatever, you know, check the internet on Saturday and it's boom, Colin Simmons has popped up for a surprise visit. That kind of thing happens every cycle. Yeah, so I, I think – it's smart for LSU to keep recruiting him. I mean, he was the guy that was you're right there for. And look, Dominic McKinley, another prospect LSU's been in on for a long, long time, is set to make his decision on September 1st. This is really one of the tougher recruitments to read that I can remember in a long time, Shay. Um, at least I think. I mean, there's there's so many different 
points of confidence for other programs. And LSU has even gotten a little buzz off the Bayou Splash. I mean, he he, he and his family do a great job of keeping things close to the vest. I, I don't know where he'd commit right now if it was decision day. No, and the t- the f- you see four teams there on his on three RPM: Texas, LSU, A and M, and Oklahoma. They're all very much in the mix. That's not even showing Ohio State, who's a school that's held some quiet confidence that they could maybe pull this one off. So, with a kid like McKinley who blew up very late in his recruiting process, I mean, he went from basically unranked to being a five star, and had a slew of offers all come in over the span of just a couple of months. Then he uses all of June to make out of state visits. He uses his only visit at the end of July to LSU. Now you've got five teams who are all sitting there saying, hey, when we had him on campus, we thought things went well. Now, reading it from the LSU side, I think that we both have agreed they've had ground to make up. I think that anyone around LSU circles you would talk to would say that. And people will say, well, how does that happen for a Louisiana kid? I just think that sometimes that's how things unfold. They take other visits and they get enamored by other programs. And in a very short time period, that can happen. Like that happened over the month of June, really, after he had made some visits to LSU and other schools in the spring, but then uses June to visit all the out-of-state schools, uses end of July to see LSU. And at that point, LSU knows, hey, we've got some ground to make up. So there is a couple of weeks left till he announces, Billy. I know that you wrote about this in uh, on the Bengal Tiger, and I agree that he is not one that's going to drum up the recruiting process. Like once he commits, he's not going to be out there making visits all the time. But if it doesn't go LSU's way, I don't think it's over because they will be the one school that turns up the heat more than any other school does. The in-state team will always, that will always be the case for the in-state team. If a kid's committed to them or uncommitted or committed somewhere else. So if it is LSU now, great. If it's not, they're going to have to double down even more. But then they have a lot of time. What is it, August right now? You've got four months until signing day, a whole football season where you can go see him play. He can maybe get in for some games. You can go in home on visits. You get his family in for an official visit. I think even if he commits to another school right now, those things can still happen for LSU. So they're not done yet for the number one player in the state. They may well get him on September 1st. As you said, this has been one where I can understand each side saying, hey, we feel good for this reason and it be true. I just think that for LSU, there's still work to be done and we'll see how ultimately the chips fall. Yeah, I, I think Dom and his family, it's going to be really interesting if if he doesn't go to LSU it, when he makes his decision. Look, the, the good thing is he is in state. He is just down the road. LSU can turn the heat up. I just don't know if 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 they're going to just be receptive to that. And, you know, that's recruiting sometimes. But I, I don't know. I, I think he's he's the way he's played the recruiting process. It's just uh, maybe the LSU just needs more time on this one to keep building relationships and keep doing that. But, man, it's just going to be it's going to be tough uh, because just the way that the family's kind of handled it, it just seems like they're they're kind of over it. They're done with it. And that's why they want it done before the season. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I think LSU's got a, they've got two weeks, first of all, to uh, try and get him on board, which is an eternity uh, in a sense, in some ways. I mean, we saw with Tylen Singleton, um, he was a guy that didn't even visit LSU since April. And there was buzz leaving July that he was going to leave the state. And then LSU turns the heat up in a couple of weeks and they don't even need the Bayou splash visit. He commits. So, We've seen some weird, somebody on the board said it today, and if you're not a Bengal Tiger subscriber, join today, $10 a month right now, you can get the free Founders Club hat. Somebody said it perfectly. I think this cycle has been very just kind of up and down emotions. You get Caden Durham coming to LSU, but then you don't get Colin Simmons. You hear the buzz around Colin Simmons. You hear the buzz around Kai Bates and other schools, and then you get Kai Bates. Tylen Singleton doesn't visit, then commits. I mean, it's been a wild cycle, and, uh, you know, that – that amount of time, though, you can you can turn the tide in your favor. So I'm interested to see if else you can do that. I think not every one of those cases you mentioned, but in some of them, NIL plays a factor. And that's just a new wrinkle that can throw off how, you know, tracking recruitments and predicting where kids might end up or when it might happen or anything like that. Um, it'll settle over time. But I, I think you're right. This has been an interesting cycle. And I don't think it's over with. I think that There could be storylines that continue to play out, whether in LSU's favor or not, but that people don't see coming. It's kind of happened every month now. 
Exactly. And I think that is the wild card. And that's probably, that's a piece. Like, I think when you're talking about five stars and you're talking about the, the guys that are, you know, that highly touted, most of them aren't coming for free. And, and that, I mean, I think that's where NIL can play a great role. It can also muddy things up and make it really hard to read. But, you know, LSU has been kind of working the angles and trying to do this, trying to do that. But they also had him on campus for the Bayou Splash. You know, they they did get him to come over with his family for that uh, event. So I don't know how it's going to work out. You know, somebody you know, asked me on the board, well, do, you know, all this talk about out-of-state schools, does that mean he's not coming to LSU? I don't know because I don't think they've made a final decision. I don't think they've informed a school yet. That's just my opinion. I could be totally wrong. We could get, you know, he could come out and said, well, I've been committed for a while. I don't think he's going to do that. But I just don't think this one is at the point of a decision being made, which with two weeks ago, that's a lot of time for LSU. Yeah. And again, I'm still thinking if we'll see how their whole plan from behind, if they can flip him, if he does commit elsewhere, how all that unfolds in December, because until then it's speculation. So for those who are frustrated and say, how do we lose the number, you know, LSU fans, how are we losing the number one player in the state? That's a conversation to have, have after December. Let's see how things unfold these next four months. Yep, absolutely. So we'll see how it works out with all these guys set to hit LSU's campus. I'm sure there'll be a surprise or two as well. So be sure to keep it locked on the BengalTiger.com for the latest. Please hit that subscribe button to our YouTube channel. Click the like button. Throw us on notifications. Do all the things wherever you catch your podcasts at. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. High school football is here. Going to some games this weekend. Excited to see some of our subscribers in Atlanta. Shay, have a great weekend. Everybody on the pod, have a great weekend. And uh, thanks for listening to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast.